it's here. I'm not sure whether the dean is here, Pro Hamza. Uh, Deputy Dean, say, say Dr. Yumi, uh, Prof. Moha, all the academic staff of INHAR, uh, students, ladies and gentlemen, participants of, of uh, INHAR, uh, uh, INHAR talk here. Yeah. Uh, today we are um, very fortunate that to have a Puan Norharati Jalil uh, that will deliver, yeah, uh, share with us, yeah, uh, very very interesting topics. Uh, even uh, some for some of us, uh, perhaps a uh, VUCA is a new term for us, yeah. So the title of the topic for today is a VUCA. Uh, well, how it impacts the halal ecosystem, yeah, the VUCA wall, how it impacts the halal ecosystem. What is VUCA? Yeah, uh, VUCA, uh, if we see, uh, uh, it means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. Is it correct, yeah, Puanor Hariti? Yes, yeah, it is. It is very uh, complex uh, phenomena, and that it is very much discussed, especially in the management and leadership. If I'm not mistaken. So, what is the impact of VUCA to um, uh, halal ecosystem? Yeah. So today uh, we have uh, Pua Norhariti. Uh, before uh, we give time to her, I would like to. Uh, introduce yeah, Puano Hariti to all of you. Um, Puano Hariti is uh, currently is a consultant um, and he, he, she is an independent advisor and consultant focusing on strategy and performance improvement with a strong influence in the halal industry development. <laughs> Uh, I know Puan Norhariti, uh, before this, is uh, attached to Halal Development Corporation, if I'm not mistaken. And then she is very long list of experience. And then, um, uh, but uh, one thing that we have to, to bear in mind is she is also a chartered accountant. A chartered accountant with uh, the Institute of Chartered Accountant in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, apart from uh, 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 trainers, yeah, especially in the halal uh, trainings and and, and the halal ecosystem. So uh, without without uh, further delay, I would like to invite the yeah, Norhariti Jalil uh, to deliver her talk on a VUCA world, how it impacts the halal ecosystem. Tafadal, Puan. Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for uh, being here. Oh, I'm trying to share my screen, and now it says I cannot share my screen, so let me just try this again. Okay, while, while the computer is trying to uh, put the screen on board, because I'm, I'm not used to Google Meet, so now I'm trying to figure out this Google Meet. <laughs> um, let me just uh, go through. Stop sharing. Can you see the screen? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. You can. Okay, Bye. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Iwandi, for introducing me. Yes, um, I have a long list of experience. Uh, so Not so much in uh, maybe Halal industry, which is uh, the screen that I'm presenting right now, but where I was uh, in Halal industry, how do I get involved Yeah, since 2005? Uh, please do not read the screen because I actually presented this to the government to show my credentials so that I can be... Uh, selected to become one of their uh, panels in some of their halal initiative. Yeah? But where I'm coming from, yes, I am a chartered accountant with the uh, Institute of New Zealand and Australia, which combined both uh, professional firms uh, in late about 2015, 16. And I, I'm also a member of uh, Australia ICAA, 
And with that, um, I've been practicing uh, I've, um, uh, from chartered accountant. Yes, I was doing accounting all the way through until I got my chartered. Then I decided to do consulting because I think consulting is a bit more interesting. So I came back from New Zealand and actually continued my consulting practice. And um, in 1991, so this is where the consulting experience started. Yeah, but uh, what happened is, uh, in the industry in in Malaysia has been there since hmm, 1974. Yeah, 40 years. But my involvement was deeply started in 2005 when we start to look at the Abu Putra blueprint, which is our uh, one of the uh, blueprint that is key for the government, and we start developing a halal hub for meat yeah and from there on from that blueprint we wanted to get the malaise involvement in this um i joined um as part of the um, national economic plan ninth national economic plan um i was involved in the development of uh, a suggestion recommendation on some of the initiatives and we developed a uh, a company malaysian agri food to drive the halal uh, the, the supply chain for agri food in Malaysia, and that's when I start. We started to look at halal logistics, and this halal logistic was a company that we implemented uh, in two in two thousand. I think they got the certification. If uh, if CCN is on board, yeah, CCN is the company that we we started with the halal logistic. This is before um, uh, halal logistic was even become becoming a standard. We did it with the local uh, the Slangor Islamic Department. And uh, we got CCN to be firstly certified halal, uh, in, in fact, for the country and also for the world, to be very honest. And from there on, uh, I moved into uh, halal industry, halal, corporate, halal industry corporation, HDC. And in HDC, you can see there are a lot of things that I've done there. I was uh, looking at the halal integrity for the last for five years, from 2012 until 2017. And this is where at least some of you knows me uh, from my involvement in uh, halal industry, uh, looking with the strengthening the halal integrity, looking into human capital or what we call halal talent development, uh, developing protocols to start off traceability with uh, private entities uh, here. The global halal data pool was uh, uh, GS1 was with Serunai. And uh, we also look at strengthening the halal governance. I even chaired a bank or workshop with um, with a government agency, Mampu, to look into the governance of halal industry together with Chakim and uh, Standards Malaysia. So that was my involvement. Uh, and then I moved on a bit after 2017 into Ernst Young. That was my previous company when I came back from New Zealand. Uh, that was Arthur Anderson, who then later on became Ernst Young. And I continue about two years uh, or so in Ensen Yang. This is where I start to look into the um, development of the next Halal Industry Master Plan with HTC until 2030. And I start to uh, do a lot of um, uh, speak. I, I, I took up a few speaking slots uh, in, in Malaysia. And then I was also invited by the Minister of Human Resource to become panel for the National Occupational uh, framework development standard scheme and the recent one after I left in Senyang was to look into the uh, uh, the framework halal science framework which I met Prof Iwandi but he left because he was so busy with other things so Dr Yumi came on board and I think this is where we came <laughs> get to continue the exercise <laughs> yes Dr uh, Prof I think you're still in <laughs> yeah okay um over here i'm still involved to a certain extent uh in the health industry by looking into topics so i think this VUCA world i mean the first time i looked at it i was also quite surprised what is VUCA? you know i asked uh, dr yumi and of course i think she said go and find out yourself right so that's what i did i went out to find out what VUCA is and i think it's got not, not, nothing different to uh what we are looking at right now um I've been involved in change management for quite some time when I was doing consulting in the government. Uh, most of my clients are actually government, uh, uh, government department. And one of the areas that I was always been involved is change. So if you look at it, change is the only constant in the world right now. Uh, uh, every day, every second of our life, there's change happening. There's a lot of things out there in the environment that's making us respond. And I think um, the topic VUCA is very much about 
uh, adapting or addressing change in the in our life. And definitely, when you look at some of the leadership thoughts about VUCA, it was saying that best practice was yesterday. Best thinking is in demand today and tomorrow. So when I was in Arthur Nissen, I was part of the development of global best practices um, with a company to look into the supply chain and value chain of many industries. Yeah. So every time when we do consulting work, we start to compare ourselves. You know, the company wants to know what's the best practice for me to improve myself when we transform entities, right? So we start looking at the areas that they that look at, for example, you know, talent development, what is the best practice for talent development, for example. And then we look at how other entities evolve into making talent development a key uh, pillar for an organization. So similarly now, this best practice I see around, and I think even my recent assignment with HDC, we are looking at best practices on how to adapt uh, halal processes into um, property uh, operations, for example. So uh, when we are saying what's best practices in halal property operation, there's none. So this is where thinking, thinking about how to do this is, uh, is the way to move forward these days. And I think in our MQA development of Halal Studies Framework, we talk about companies or entities or industry being agile. So agile is about addressing VUCA in terms of uh, vulnerability, uncertainty, uh, complexity, and also ambiguity. So it's a, about, a lot about experience coming into, into the, the situations that we're in. And this is why, to a certain extent, um, I would like to share with you my thinking I haven't, I've been, I've been Googling VUCA in our industry, there's nothing that come about except for uh, an article that I read um, coming from, um, I think it was in 2018, recently uh, in Indonesia, yeah, uh, about using Islamic economy uh, to address VUCA. Uh, I can't, uh, I've got the quote somewhere, but uh, it's not in this slide, it's in another slide that I have next to me. Um, now, let me go through, because I only got one hour to talk. I don't have any slide, but actually I need to relate to what I'm trying to say to the Malaysian Hala ecosystem community, okay? Uh, this is the Hala ecosystem that uh, HDC has presented, which was developed during the 2030, the new master plan, yeah? Master plan 2.0 for Halal. Uh, we're looking at this ecosystem comprising of a network of components yeah you can see this you can i've got a reference source there you can actually go through the source um, later on and it it is a component within a cycle because the reason uh, for 2030 halal master's plan was to grow the uh, halal industry um, and deliver and delivery of halal products that contributes towards the overall social economy. If you look at Malaysia, halal is not enacted in any ACTA, in any acts, but it sits with uh, the um, Trade Discretion Act, yeah, in order to to enforce or to 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 accept halal by the by the industry and also the community. So here, in, inside with this ecosystem, we look at the component within the ecosystem. It's got its own activity. So we're looking at consumer. You're talking about creating demand, yeah, uh, demanding for our products, and you're looking at industry, which comprises of MNCs, LLCs, SMEs, micro enterprises, creating their own entrepreneurship uh, activities and de uh, and developing products of services um, within the 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 um, uh, the processes or the pillars that uh, halal uh, in halal industry in Malaysia wants to to hold. Yeah. So if, if you look at the halal industry in Malaysia, uh, moving forward, we are looking at those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things within the circle uh, that will support the uh, the achievement of what industry play wants and hopefully it will benefit the consumers overall, not just in Malaysia, but, uh, but uh, throughout the world. We look at policy and legislation. Yeah, We look at human capital development. This is the area that I've been uh, looking at for the last few years. Science, technology, innovation. There is already a master plan or, or a strategic plan for this uh, with regards to halal. Infrastructure and logistic. This is the, the common halal parks, uh, the, the, um, the infrastructure uh, or the, the the 
the standards that, that have been built, you know, in Malaysia, the MS standards for halal, I think we've got about 13 of them or so, uh, the logistics side, so that you can do the fulfillment for halal. Um, let's talk about it slightly later, because I'm very much into the supply chain thing. And also the types of incentives that can be created to drive the industry play to, to create more halal products and services. And some of the very nitty, nitty area that, that needs to look at is like uh, awareness and promotion uh, to create demand. Uh, and now uh, the economics is also very key, looking at data and analytics and of course, sciences side in order to ensure how the integrity is, str is strengthened, we look at the conformity assessment as well. So if we look at it, there are a lot of players in this. In Malaysia, there are more than 300 odd agency. I don't know what's the latest count because they keep moving into the number of agencies and, and ministry uh, in Malaysia at the at current space. And um, what are the KPIs that, that will drive the industry is actually trade, employment, investment, and of course, the halal integrity itself. Now, halal integrity here is very much driven through the halal certification skills that's been developed uh, by Jakim and standards developed by skills, uh, uh, sorry, um, standards of Malaysia. Yeah? Standards of Malaysia. So they are all, these are the halal ecosystem or here they've termed the Malaysian halal ecosystem community. So when we talk about VOCA, we are talking about this entire uh, circles, how many circles do we have there? One, two, three, four, four or five circles that will be impacted uh, based on what's happening in uh, in the world. Yeah? So I like to look at VOCA from crisis management perspective. I'm going to look at two perspectives. One is crisis management, which I Google and found this from Harvard Business Review and I thought it was very interesting and it's very much relevant to, to the world that we're facing right now or even the whole ecosystem. And the second one is actually about leadership because to me, uh, Malaysia is moving towards developing leadership in halal, so there are a few matters in, in, in management or in leadership that needs to be uh, uh, looked at. Yeah? Um, so we look at uh, the four quadrants. Yeah? Uh, sorry, here they, they started with complexity against how can you predict the results of what you're doing against how much do you know about the situation. Uh, this is very important because when you look at halal, um, People only look at the surface of the iceberg, but not what's inside. So if you look at a situation, very, uh, it's very much silo, very much vertical rather than horizontal. So you need to really understand the situation and look at the impact uh, uh, horizontally rather than looking at what, trying to address the issue only. And then what kind of actions that you need to take against the situation that you are in. So I'm not going to go through this. Hopefully I can share this later with you. But what's important is how, you know, this particular area would actually impact the whole ecosystem in terms of crisis. I think crisis is, 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 uh, is addressing this matter on a daily basis. I know that within the, each company, they have to have a team of halal uh, talents, which is led by halal executive uh, to look into the technicalities or of, of addressing compliance within organization but now moving forward with VOCA coming on board I think they need to move beyond just looking at compliance if you look at the halal ecosystem compliance is just within this halal integrity bit what about the rest of this yeah so uh, I think in the what we have done uh, in the halal occupational framework we are trying to address all this within the industry context while at the same time benefiting the components through employment, through investment, trade, and of course, conf uh, uh, compliance. So the Halal Occupational Framework has developed positions in the Halal industry organization based on about three key segments, regulatory, manufacturing, or production, and also um, uh, services to look how um, instead of just you know, uh, being being stuck with uh, compliance through HALA executive um, training, we can then start moving into the management of the organization. Because uh, in order to address VOCA, you need to part to be part of that organization. So let's look at some of the examples here that I've put through, for example. When we look at complexity of halal, we are talking about certification schemes catering for Muslim population over, what, 195 countries, 249 nations. And out of this, 
you know, 57 members of these countries are in OIC, and of which 56 of these are UN members, and 42 Muslim majority. So you can imagine, you know, the likes of Indonesia coming on board here. You're talking about wanting to address the demand, yeah, the consumer within the ecosystem, within that, within that uh, uh, country, yet we are talking about trade here, yeah, where we want to move products from uh, Muslim countries to us to be accessible outside the world. That's what Malaysia wants to do. But at the same time, other parts of the world wanting to come into into the Muslim country. Yeah. If you look at the the mission or the vision of why Nestle is Malaysia, is in Malaysia because I want to access the market. So now Nestle has been driving a lot of the halal standards in Malaysia, and because of that, they become they become very. Uh, very um, demanded, very demanded in the halal ecosystem to address the issues that they are facing within the halal ecosystem. Now, it's very complex, yeah, in in, in, the, in that manner because if you look at uh, compare, even comparing uh, the halal certification, the way Malaysia does it within the uh, Mabim, yeah, and also within the ASEAN countries, there will be some uh, differentiation. So recently, we heard that Jakim has just accredited themselves, yeah, uh, in under one. ISO 17065 to be to drive the uh, accreditation or, or the schemes um, uh, in a in a, a more uh, structured way or, or recognized uh, under the ISO uh, certification so that it would be able to stabilize some of the 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 different in certification schemes that they are currently addressing. They're not addressing everybody, yeah? they're not addressing all the three countries, but certainly markets where we have trade, Malaysia has trade with them, because not uh, apart from exporting, we are also importing products from other parts of the world into Malaysia. So, yeah? so it's slightly complex, meaning we also need to understand, and that is very overwhelming as well, but what other parts of the world is doing, certain things that Malaysia uh, and the halal, uh, we 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 are strict with, but other parts of the world they are not. So how do you address some of these perceptions that we have globally? Yeah? Uh, volatility, I think, with the um, uh, sorry, I'm 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 moving from uh, left to right here. In terms of the screen, we are looking at the disruptions coming. You know, apart from pandemic, I think I've heard so many talks about how pandemic the the current pandemic is affecting. Not only the, the the industry ecosystem, but certainly on halal, and how you know uh, even the, the 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 compliance, the auditing of halal now is going virtual, for example. So uh, what else is coming on board? I think there's there's no difference because when uh, the Y2K uh, happened in year 2000, when information uh, communication and technology merge into one, I I foresee that similar type of anxiety will happen for halal. Yeah, where uh, the usage of technology, not just uh, through blockchain, which is important for traceability purposes uh, in halal, um, people will need to, to start embracing other technologies, uh, maybe AI, you know, to actually uh, uh, perform or conduct some of these things. At the same time, the technology is also evolve, uh, you know, nonstop, every day new things happening in technology. You know, uh, it's not but now people going to 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 the moon or to the rest uh, of the planets around the world uh, around the universe but now we are talking about how to 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 be able to have access to uh, to products which you know if you look at the, the 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 distribution of resources around the world many resources are in the non muslim countries and they need to come you know the muslim country needs it halal ingredients need it so that they can the the, the entrepreneurs within the the, the country within the Muslim country can actually develop the product. Now, if you look at recently when the announcement, when FGV, which is uh, uh, our local um, company that that uh, produces CPO and oil, yeah, cooking oil, suddenly being being uh, stopped from entering um, uh, America, for example. So that's you know without without with, uh, because what because of social compliance. They're talking about uh, the the social compliance now being embedded into some of the 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 rules for them to trade, yeah. So and and it it, it would impact the the Malaysian export uh, to that extent, yeah, because um, halal ingredients or even finished products in terms of cooking oil is one of the uh, trade uh, items 
for Malaysia. And by having that, you know, apart from pandemic coming on board, so it's like a double whammer to 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 the halal exports for the country. And uh, US is actually the third largest uh, exporting country for Malaysia. So with the vol volatility, uh, I'm not going to talk about the volatility on the politics side because I think this is like also another area that we are looking at. Now France is very, very, very extreme in terms of how they look at Islam. So again, Islam is uh, France is not a key um, uh, uh, country. Uh, well, I cannot say not key. It's not uh, one of the largest trade for Malaysia, but still, this type of volatility uh, and their duration, we don't know is going to last. Yeah. Now, moving down to uncertainty, you know, uh, I've given an example here on how the current, you know, if you look, uh, read or some of the, 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 the recent um, uh, articles isn't even been issued by here locally uh, under the World Hala Conference that just recently and at the beginning of this, this month, we're talking about Hala supply chain lacking authenticity with data inaccuracy. Okay, so here we are. To, I mean, some of the debates that we are having uh, in terms of the uh, sharing of data and how data is being mis misused along the supply chain, whether at the uh, industry supply chain or or even at the consumer side and the social media and marketing. So there's a lot of uh, governance issue that need to be addressed here. You know, so it's it, we know what's the cause of it. We know what information we need, but why is it not being shared across the supply chain? Uh, without having that uh, type of arrangement or understanding or even regulation, um, you need to, we, the, this thing will, will still be there. The certainty of whether or not my product is actually halal across the supply chain will still be questionable. Now, if you look at the current uh, IP uh, regulated regulate, uh, on uh, IP in Malaysia, apart from PDPA, yeah? personal side, you're looking about moving information from one end to another. I was involved in the development of this for the country during my recent years in, in, in consultancy uh, after the year 2000, actually. And um, at that time, it was like to control certain um, comparative information from moving forward. Yeah? But some of this information is needed in order to address the halal integrity across the supply chain. When product move from a farm to, to, to market, not to the consumer, but now we're talking about farm to, to the table, right? Certain information need to be shared across the supply chain in order to allow the activities within the industry player to happen. Correct or not? And even if I want to take insurance, you know, if my product has been abandoned on the road, for example, it's halal supply, you know, and, and, and for whatever reason, maybe, uh, you know, lack of fuel and selling diesel and the, the truck uh, stopped in the middle of the road. How do I... Uh, get myself insured. My involvement in Malaysian agri-food was looking at how to to uh, uh, to uh, move product. Yeah, at that time it was tomato to Dubai, and 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 it came to a point where sometimes the product was actually perished by the time it reaches uh, the country. And the and and how do you know what happened in between? Is it because there's a movement in temperature because we we put it on a CA yeah? a control uh, control uh, containers control temperature containers, we don't know whether the movement of the, 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 the temperature, some, some, something happened, you know, as a result, the, the product uh, went bad when it reaches the customer. So this kind of information need to be transparent. Otherwise, how would do you, how a consumer or even uh, uh, the, the next, this, what do I call the, 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 the person who receives the product, trust that everything is intact while it's moving across the plane, across the sea, across the air, you know. So some of these things need to be, uh, needs to be addressed. And whether or not what uh, the current World Halal Conference uh, mooted, uh, the Halal Act, you know, uh, is required to govern countries practicing halal. Maybe not halal, but halal industry. Because you can't, you know, in Malaysia, halal is actually very much protected under the, 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 the rulers, yeah? But what about the halal industry? Because it's about the clustering of uh, several ecosystems around the world. And there's a need for, for Malaysia halal ecosystem to connect with the Indonesia ecosystem, halal ecosystem, Brunei halal ecosystem, you know, the, even in ASEAN, you need to connect. But what is it that will actually hold them together uh, or, or creating trust uh, among the different halal ecosystem? Uh, especially when we are under the, you know, developed 
developing countries, sorry, not developed countries. Developed countries, this thing is very much uh, transparent because it's been handled uh, by the, the technology all the way through. I've seen, I've seen how uh, a cow, you know, uh, um, milk is being produced from farm where the, the cow, you know, are freely, you know, through tagging, of course, GPS goes into the milking station, being, being milked by the, by the robots. And then uh, the, 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 you know, the whole thing is being handled by, by robots. Uh, you know, and, and and up to a point where it's been bottled. Uh, the only human that was there was the supervisor to make sure that the system works. If there's any inter inter interruption in bottling, you know, uh, different caps being put on a uh, for for low fat and and full cream, for example. So this whole thing, you know, is being transparent because you got data being collected all the way through in terms of the movement of the products. So this is what is needed automation in the in, in the the respective. Uh, Hala industry to address some of the uh, um, authenticity and data accuracy, uh, and you don't even need an act if you if this is 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 technology driven. You know, it's just a matter of governance that need to be developed to ensure that um, I trust what Indonesia says, I trust what Brunei says, I trust what Vietnam is saying in terms of the halalness of their product. Yeah, and lastly, in terms of ambiguity. I here, I've related it to some emerging industries that uh, the Hala industry in Malaysia wants to address, which is uh, vaccine, medical devices. And recently, you know, uh, in one of the vibes, we are talking about Halal TV. We are talking about dressing the social media, where a lot of the uh, news are currently being, being uh, questioned in terms of its uh, authenticity as well, whether it's fake or, or otherwise, and, and proper... Um, uh, dissemination of information given to a channel or a platform that would, you know, uh, bring all the right uh, uh, messaging uh, on the halalness of products and services. So, um, halal concepts in medical device, you know, it's not an entire thing. When I think when I was looking at medical device in 2019, uh, not halal, of course. There's already. Uh, the discussion about or, or companies that are ready to do halal medical device. Of course, there are MNCs uh, who, are, who have investment in the country. But um, this area is very regulated, like pharmaceutical. So um, the speed of implementation will be uh, the same as how uh, uh, pharmaceutical items like vaccine uh, uh, will, will pace. No. Uh, about the we, about the unknowns in terms of this area, and we also do do not know what to anticipate what will happen if um, this uh, this particular industry is not being addressed. Yeah, so that's my take in terms of the uh, the crisis. Or let me try to see where's my cursor. Oh, man. Okay, let me see. Okay, about uh, crisis uh, areas situation that I'm looking at now. Look at the leadership, you know, where we're talking about best practices was yesterday. Of course, when you look best practices, what happened yesterday? How does Nokia become from a train company become a telco company at one stage? Yeah, so there's a lot of best practices that they learned, you know. Sorry, Nokia was a real company. Yes, it was a real company and then become a, a, a telco, big telco company when, when handphones started, you know. So there's a lot of best practice which was learned from previously. But now moving forward, we are talking about looking at best thinking. And this is what is demanded today, how to address a pandemic, how to address technology disruption. We really do need this. Now, looking at this, uh, I, I've actually under, under, underlined a few things, but I've summarized it here in terms of, look at the most right, yeah? in terms of the halal ecosystem, what matters in terms of leadership, is the adaptation of halal practices to becoming halal lifestyle. If you look at the demographic of of uh, Muslim population, I think more than 30% are those younger generation, they are youth. And the way they drive halal is actually looking at halal is different. And areas that they're looking at are also different. They're not looking into the core uh, products, uh, production or even uh, distribution. They're looking at lifestyle. So this is coming on board uh, quite fast. Uh, making halal practices to become mainstream. I think this is where the uh, the the, the the adoption of Makassi Sharia into lifestyle and, and aligning 
halal, you know, to, to be to embracing halal into some of the five pillars, uh, five objectives of, uh, of Sharia to allow uh, or to influence uh, the, the way the consumers are behaving and also uh, 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 which is being achieved through some of the products or services that's being developed by the industry. And if we look back, if you look back, sorry, I just go back to the health ecosystem. Yeah, you look at back all the components, you know, in the middle there, in terms of policy, talent, SDI, science and technology innovation, and will change based on those new consumer demand coming coming forward from the newer generation, uh, from the uh, youth generation. Um, secondly, under uh, uncertainty, historic and past parents using relevance across economies. Yeah, if you look at it, we are talking about uh, doing things differently. Uh, we don't go to, to the shops to buy our food anymore, even to retail we are going on e-commerce platform online. Uh, previously, we said, no, I have to touch the material, you know, I have to touch the, the chair that I'm sitting, I have to feel it before I can buy. But if you look at now, I think those, those practices are no more relevant. They're talking about how uh, some of the products being properly positioned onto the, the, their website blogs or even the platforms. And, and people even come to a point where, you know, pictures are now uh, are coming from all angles. And, and now maybe later in the future, which, which when I was in the I said, I wanted to have holograms of this item where you can also, I think there are technologies where you can actually feel it, feel the material because you're, you're, you're combining biosensors or even adaptation of Science. This is why STI is very important. Science, technology, innovation, so that consumer at the in front of their desktop, they can actually look at the product and actually feel it. I think this this technology is already available. Uh, surely in the developed countries, this is already there. Yeah? So that's why those past experiences is actually like okay, cannot cannot be considered already. So this is important when we start looking at uh, uh, transformation, improving business performance of uh, of uh, businesses. Yeah. Uh, moving down on the right hand side, we are talking about um, the halal ecosystem community intermingling with each other and pathways. It's like a domino effect. So, uh, if you look back at the, let's see if I can go up. Look at this ecosystem. If you know uh, the consumer doesn't want it, you know, um, of course you go straight into the the middle of the circle, the nucleus. None of this would have happened anyway. Okay, so demand is very important, but if you look from a uh, push factor, yeah, from middle of circle to consumer, you are talking about, um, uh, say, you know, uh, handling uh, infrastructure, for example. Infrastructure now is not about physical halal parts. Yes, that's good for production. But what about the fulfillment of products to consumer? Yeah, uh, the, the likes of Lazada, Alibaba will not be there if you don't have a proper fulfillment uh, um, centers or, or, or system to address that matter to 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 reach out, you know, to to send the products to the to the consumer, right? So, what kind of infrastructure is needed for this? So, if we look at it, it's very highly distributed into a supply chain. There's no more big warehouses. If you look at the concept of supply chain, they are building um, um, the 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 stores or the storage uh, place close to the community or to the demographic that they are addressing. Yeah, so this is important because um, I remember when I was in uh, south of uh, Peninsula Johor and this guy was distributing, uh, was, was having a, a chain store pizza, uh, yeah, pizza in, in, at the airport. And I said, well, this is nice. How do I access this in Kuala Lumpur? How do I access this in KL? I can send it to you in 10 minutes. So, but meaning when I fly back, I make in my order now, I fly back, that thing is actually at my doorstep, even before I reach KL. So this is very important looking at this concept where um, the fulfillment of the infrastructure of such businesses is no more about uh, going into the best area where the, the, the storage is cheap, but the development of a connectivity, road, uh, air and sea, it's very important and for a consumer it's actually the roadside or the of course sometimes we need the the air right to actually deliver so this is uh, the the thinking about how um uh, some of the uh, uh 
uh, new uh, platforms that's being developed. They're not just looking at technology platform in terms of taking orders from consumer, but also to look at the investment in the fulfillment centers for them to be able to compete with each other about whether or not who will get their products first. I mean, if I order now, when will I get it? So halal ecosystem now will also have to ensure that the centers, these distribution centers in, in, in agriculture, it's called CC, collection and DC, distribution centers, are being halal certified as part of GSTIC. As far as the, the um, standard, it's already there. But now investment into these areas need to be done because they're not big. They're very small, small centers. Even a house can actually become a store center, yeah, to, to house some of these. But how do you make them halal? Make sure that the halal integrity is not uh, compromised, yeah? Uh, and then the most, the last one we're talking about uh, in terms of leadership, you know, thinking about one uh, size fits all is, is no more relevant. You're talking the, uh, the, the, the challenging business models and personal values. So um, not everybody in, in within the, the ecosystem has the same value. Even certification, you know, if you look at the certification, there's always been arguing about how certain certification is better than the other and otherwise, yeah? But at the same time, it's what the consumer wants, you know? If you, I mean, I've been posing uh people have been posing a uh, question to me you know i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not a sharia but i don't have a complete strong sharia background but uh, i do i do look into some of these uh readings um they're talking about you know um can i trust this uh halal from it doesn't have a jakim logo can i eat it so if you if you if just looking at branding or marketing of halal products you're talking about um, some of this personal value going into the, 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 the marketing aspect or the positioning aspect of a product, branding. Alhamdulillah, you know, when we were, I was doing branding, for, we were doing branding, I mean, together with uh, my, uh, the team that looked into this uh, on, on um, fresh product. Uh, the product is still on, on store, in store right now. I mean, I'm, I'm proud to go to the store and see those brands still there, still exist. So similar with Halal, you know, it's not about so much of the logo. It's about the, the, the personal value that goes into the, the halal logo, the products itself, and also how it's been positioned to the consumer. You, you would want to make sure, you know, if you were in, a, in retail, if you're a promoter for halal, for example, I mean, I, I've, I've gone to a promoter before, he's a marketeer for halal, and I said, why is this product halal? I don't think this, halal, this product requires any halal logo, uh, any, any halal. What is so halal about glove, for example? And he said, oh, we've got uh, Jakim certification is that enough to me? Oh, if that's all your 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 concern about product is that to get a halal logo, then I don't think I want to be part of that company's value system. Yeah, because I want to see that the rest of the organization within the the company uh, ecosystem embraces the value. When we talk about organization, we we talk about shared values. We talk about you know, you, 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 you go and advise company, they, they always ask, what's the shared value of the organization? Shouldn't the values of uh, maybe not halal, but the value that you want to portray in halal be part of that shared values of organizations? So that every single organization from board right down to the driver, yeah, management, uh, mid management, uh, and, and also the rest of the executive knows how to explain the, the, the value system of Sharia or with the Islamic values within a product, yeah, irrespective whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. Because I've, I've tested on one before where when I went to one restaurant and said, can I eat this? I never asked whether this is halal or not. Look at me. Can I eat this product? And he said, oh, yes, I know about halal. And there's a non-Muslim explaining to me, uh, fresh grad from Australia, non-Muslim, and he explained to me about halal. And I was very impressed. And he said, don't worry, you can eat in this restaurant because we know that they are doing the right. So, so when, you, when personal values goes into a product, it gives more repu, uh, higher reputation in terms of uh, the products that you are uh, you know, uh, distributing in the, in the market. So that's on the, the, to me, what matters. And of course, with this, the business models needs to change. The way things are being done, uh, the uh, approach halal, halal should be part of the strategy plan. Halal should be part of a process development, uh, not just 
SOP compliance, but it's also part of the risk and the mitigation factor of an organization to make sure that uh, you can uh, portray the positive values so that you can attract investment. Because it's one of you, you need funding yeah, to actually move forward, uh, not just uh, putting up suku or go into Islamic crowdfunding, but if the values are not being embedded into the organization, then um, uh, there is a mis misalign, mismatch there somewhere. And of course, your talents, not just Hala executive, but you also need to promote the, this, 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 um, this uh, Hala executive into positions where they can command the leadership of the organization. Technology, there's no Hala technology, but you're talking about embracing technology in platforms that would move products or uh, val uh, your product's values to the consumer and to your suppliers and partners. So it's both upstream and downstream in terms of partnering alliances that needs to be addressed. Now going down the value chain, you know, some uh, scient a very, very scient some company like pharmaceutical, personal care, they have research and development that needs to also you know, value some of this. And you're talking about um, education. You know, this is where we were emphasizing about uh, wanting to have more talents, uh, either through education or skill development for the halal industry. Technically, they are sound, but uh, from, from the Islamic perspective, uh, embracing uh, putting in halal into their work is also another area that we need to make sure that our talents are strong and they can defend the, the, the product, the halal product or services that they're offering. So that's the, to me, in terms of some of this vitality, some of the keywords are actually coming from the VUCA itself, which I have applied onto the, uh, the, uh, the slide. Um, looking at the risk side, uh, just go back to the left side of this, my left, lah. maybe it's your right, is it? Uh, uh, in terms of this uh, slide, uh, under VUCA, under V, we need to look at the stability of industry components inside halal. So this is where one of the areas that a halal industry is very much focusing on is the ingredients, halal ingredients. Uh, and uh, not just look at the ingredients, resources is also about uh, funding. I think uh, Malaysia is also, uh, uh, I mean, through HDC has signed up with various Islamic finance uh, facilities and products to support the entrepreneurs. And of course, talent development, yeah. Uh, that, that, that support uh, to, to, to stabilize some of the volatility in the halal uh, ecosystem. In terms of uncertainty, uh, information transparency across supply chain, I've already spoke about this earlier, uh, about how certain information or everything to be, that you are, the, you are best to know what is it that you can share or cannot share within the, the, the entities that, that participate across the supply chain. And that should not be a hindrance for you to share because uh, at the end of the day, if I have a best alliance for logistics, for example, I would want to keep this, uh, this partnership for a long time, yeah, to stabilize the whole, the whole, my, uh, my, the, the, the ecosystem of my company ecosystem for, for product development. In terms of conformity, I think performance of uh, parts and variables within the ecosystem must be, uh, must be shared as well. You know, you, you can imagine if uh, one company producing ingredients cannot perform and they have an issue with the uh, halalness of the ingredients, it will impact the entire supply chain. Yeah, it will impact. So their performance of what's happening, uh, um, you know, whether they are growing, you know, they should be growing together rather than growing separately because you're talking about halal as a, as a growing uh, uh, economy and also the reason why, you know, some, people, some companies are experiencing uh, increase in their revenue or income, you know, uh, at least 30%, you know, that if we heard from Buha conference, um, on, the, uh, on the value that halal industry, ha uh, halal has provided to their business. And of course, ambiguity, the unknown, uh, you have to, well, the unknown unknowns, we don't know, but again, this is where the R&D, research and development, uh, need to really um, do their, 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 their research. And, and, and this is where the association of industry and um, uh, IPTs, yeah, the higher education uh, uh, providers is key in ensuring that certain ambiguity are being addressed. I think for compliance, Jakim has done well in, in addressing this, but what about the rest of the industry? 
rest of the components of industry. There's a lot more that needs to be done. Many successful stories, uh, here we, we look at past, yeah, that has worked well in Japan, in, in US, or even in Korea, on how the, this type of collaboration uh, has gave them uh, good returns in terms of pushing their product, business products to the rest of the world in terms of quality and everything else. So I think that's all I have. Did I talk too much? Uh, that's all I have in terms of what uh, I want to say about VOCA, uh, how it impacts our ecosystem. Okay, back to you, Prof. Uh, thank you very much, Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you very much, Puan uh, Norhariti, for a very enlightening talk. Yeah, I learned a lot of VUCA and uh, yeah. how it impacts yeah, to, to the halal ecosystem in Malaysia and also in global. Uh, I a little bit uh, summarize here. Puan Nohariti has uh, mentioned, delivered, uh, and then explained first about Malaysia halal ecosystem community. And then also then uh, Puan Nuhariti mentioned about VUCA world and halal ecosystem community and what the situation yeah, at the moment, current situation. And then uh, she explained more on the VUCA world leadership, the best practice uh, and the best thinking. Yeah? And then we see what matters on the VUCA world. And then a few issues here yeah, she touched uh, in her talk about the complexity in certifications, data accuracy, and then the, the importance of uh, science, technology, and innovation. Yeah, Puan, yeah. So I think, uh, I think uh, all the participants got uh, so many things to ask. Uh, we have uh, until 11.30 for discussion if you have any any uh, questions or comments on what uh, Puan Nohariti has uh, delivered yet uh, in, in her talk. So I will open the session, the uh, question and answer session for any uh, who you can, you can um, uh, unmute your, your audio and then you raise the question or you can also write in the chat room. Yeah, please. Any question from the floor? Yes, I will write the first question, Nepuan, yeah, uh, from uh, Brother Muhammad Faisal Wahidin. Uh, product and services, uh, Jakim will audit and get certification. For company organization share value that we include halal implementation, is there any a certification body that we can get rating or in terms of evaluation of the certification for the questions? Yes, a product services will be audited by Jakim and we get the certification. Mm -hmm. And for yeah. yes. So you're talking about the value system, whether there is an entity that actually validate this? Is that yes, the question? yes, yeah, it seemed that the question, yeah. For company organization, shared values, yeah. Yes, bro. Okay. Uh, madam. Okay, I think if you look at the uh, how his human capital or talent being being looked at, yeah. Because when you when you certify talent, it's actually on individual basis. Halal executive certificates are given to individual, not to uh, the company, right? So similarly, when we talk a bit, we are we are talking about value system. It's about um, maybe personal certification through trainings. I think this is something the HDC or even Skills Development (JPK) Jabatan Pembangunan Kemahiran or Skills Development Malaysia. Uh, is looking at uh, in providing certificates on areas that um, uh, within the the HAL ecosystem, say manufacturing, uh, to certify this person that can do the right thing. Now, uh, when what what when you talk about personal value, these are some of the attributes within the skills development, or even now we are embedding it into the um, education uh, framework to be part of it. So you, when you graduate, when you get the certificate from skills development, those values are already, um, to a certain extent, 
certif verified, yeah, because they have the assessment tools and everything provided. And this is, uh, and and you can actually when when you bring it to organization, you should position yourself well to the to the hiring uh, person or entity that you know the, the the likes that you are to a certain extent been verified in terms of some of the things that you're doing now the issue is not holding that certificate the issue is how do you practice it in the organization and this is where you start looking at the organizational structure barriers uh, process you know how do you want to practice this and if you are in a Muslim uh, owned entity, uh, hopefully this is something yeah. that they will accept. But what if you are not? I've been posed question before yeah, by an ambassador in, in one of the non-Muslim countries. How do you know that this person is a practicing Muslim? So for, a, for an entity or a, or a person or your supervisor who doesn't understand about the value system of, uh, of, uh, of being a Muslim, they, they, they will not be able to verify for you. So you are the one who's educating them. So this is a da'wah side. You know, this is why we're talking about halal being, being a pathway for people like us who are not sharia yeah. background, but to be able to then explain the values of uh, uh, Islam to the rest of the organization. And to me, this is something that I, very, I cherish a lot because I, I can't speak the, the, the Arabic terms uh, like some of these ustaz and ustaz I can, but at least uh, you, it's about practice. I think this is more important. And then, then only they, they, they have, you know, I'm sure, you know, God will open the path for us to, to accept you and also to then propagate this kind of value system in the rest of the organization. And then this is the journey or the, the, the uh, um, you know, that we have to do now, you know, especially those who are now in the halal ecosystem, you should do it now. Yes. That's my answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Puan. Uh... Any more questions from the audience? Anyone to ask? Yes, Afwan, uh, when you mentioned just now about the complexity, yeah, uh, the certification, and then we know that uh, in, in this, in the world, more than hundreds of, of, of uh, certification bodies with different logos, different standards, and, and Jakim recognized about 70 something. Uh, now, uh, the trend in business is more towards, uh, more towards uh, digital platform via the digital platform, or some said the uh, social uh, commerce, I said. So when we uh, realize these differences in terms of certification, and then uh, do you think is it do you think this one is uh, a barrier for uh, industries here to proceed with this new trend in business when you know uh, people would like to buy something from from Japan and then to in Malaysia and then suddenly they see that the certification is not compatible or something like that. Yeah. How do you see this phenomenon? Yeah, um, when, when we talk about those who are in uh, product development or, uh, and also in marketing, yeah, because this two works together quite well because you are talking about uh, assessing the demand for halal, halal products. Yeah? So you're yeah. talking about uh, consumer wanting certain products. Certification comes after that. It's not about the consumer coming after the product. Otherwise, your product would have issues when it reaches the market. When I was talking to Japan before, when I was in HTC, uh, they, they built their factory in Isin, built their factory in Indonesia. And they comply to what the Indonesian market wants. Okay, so certification is after that. So certification is about uh, putting in the right ingredients, uh, ensuring toyib, okay. yeah, that and certification comes after that, right? You don't put certification, then you go backwards and change your SOP, change your your, your ingredients. It's the other way, isn't it? So, to me, certification is is just a, a, a positioning of those products to show to to, to to indicate to 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 verify that hello, my product is actually halal. It's been verified by certification bodies. But what happens before that is the most important one. 
that needs to happen. So product development has to follow what the consumer wants. If it's a, a, a Muslim consumer, they want it this way. So uh, otherwise, you know, there's no there's no work for product developers. There's no work for scientists. You know, uh, people who are in the lab. They don't. It's lab. It's not just for compliance purposes, but it's also develop new products. Yeah, and yes. this and in design, you know, you you have all these graduates coming out from design school and they don't have job to do if they're not talking about addressing what consumer wants. Now, how do yeah. you align the organization to 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 ensure those products are target? So you have the GMPs, you have the HACCP, you have the GHC, GDP, or the Gs, which is the ISO compliance around the world and ISO for management, to ensure that your systems are intact. And then you look at the the and the the, the ingredients already been looked at during product development that it's got to come out with uh, uh, halal ingredients. So these are some of the things that when I was with uh, one of the Jackims uh, convention before, I did ask the CBs, you know. How fast can you uh, uh, approve or, or certify the product development side mm. before they go into production? Because you need to work backwards now to ensure that that one is fast. Once that is being done, then it's just about, you know, you can have uh, technology, robots actually doing the rest of the work. You don't really yeah. need human. The, so that's why the, 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 one of the slides talk about that I mentioned, talk about leadership, yeah? Let me see if I am still up. Talking about this shape, it's more about how um, this word, sorry, I'm talking about this word. How the best thing is, uh, is in demand today and tomorrow. It's not about what happened before. So you, you've got to look moving forward, even though it, it's certifying the product development side, but it's got that I so has to happen there. Yeah, that's, that's my take uh, on this. Now, certification is just positioning. And I did ask this question to Jackin before what if it's self regulated rather than government regulated because as an individual of course in a muslim country it's easier to do self regulation like what saudi arabia is doing they say yeah. you know i don't need to have halal for for my products in, in saudi but of course if i want to export it or import it i need the halal logo so what does it mean it means that it's just a verification of the fact the product is halal yeah okay thank you uh well, there is this is another question here from brother lukman hakim uh, do, during this pandemic, uh, does one see any significant changes uh, to the halal ecosystem? Uh, he means in terms of industry, certification, or any entity that related to halal ecosystem. Um, I think this pandemic has impacted the entire ecosystem. The entire okay. ecosystem is just how fast each of the components of the ecosystem responds. Bond, okay. For example, what, what happened to the consumer? They're all being housed. They cannot go out to work. They've got to work from home, right? So that's impacted. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean? So industry now has to continue to survive with the with the halal products. You know, you look at the basic. Don't look at halal first. That they need to continue to produce in order to keep employment, in order to make sure that the business is staying right. So while doing that, how do they then position their products? People cannot go to the store anymore. So one of the um, supply chain concept yeah without halal yeah? they're talking about manufacturers going straight to consumer yeah business to c no more business to b b to c is about business manufacturers sorry m to c so what happens to in the middle who is the play in the middle now is actually the logistic providers you don't need the 40 tonnes you need the small tonnes maybe five tonnes so that you can go to the, the, the there's a concept that i did mention about moving the, the the storage close to the community so if the community is like where i'm seeing now right now in Ampang, it's got to be somewhere here in Ampang. it cannot be so far away because you are trying to to reduce the number of human interaction right now yes so that's one and then when you look at the 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 the, the components under the health ecosystem where all the you know human capital policy some things need to happen there and this is where in Malaysia, it's all been governed through the government delivery mechanism. When I was looking at the transformation of government delivery mechanism, this is the dinosaur that we're talking about, not just Malaysia, but any other parts of the world. Because um, uh, the leaders are not you know, politicians, you know, sometimes. And, and this is uh, to move this dinosaur is, is, uh, is, is not easy. Yeah? So uh, they, 
but however, you know, with uh, with the help of technology through data analytics and some of the uh, awareness that they have, they are able to uh, respond through some of the um, what they call it response centers that they have created. For Malaysia, for example, they have a few response centers that they have created, uh, not just for the pandemic but also for businesses. Yeah, and and what the issue now is policy and legislation. Uh, this is the biggest dinosaur. Rhinoceros that need to be that need to be moved and it moved very slowly. It's huge, but it moves very slowly. So this would be the challenge that the government has, but it doesn't mean they have to keep still. They've still got to address this issue. What is priority? Yeah, not best practices. What is priority to address the industry and the consumer? So halal, there's no akta, which is good. To a certain extent, you don't have an akta yeah. to actually stop you apart from the APD, uh, sorry, uh, the trade discussion at TDA. Um, so, so, so it's, 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 it, 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 it's not so much as stuck. They can actually change very fast. They can adapt this thing faster without having uh, so much of uh, policy and regulation holding on to them. Okay, so even, even now, for example, uh, we can now um, uh, do this uh, uh, certification, uh, selling supporting documents for certification online. You know, I think this is already, it's already there. It's just whether or not they have the technology and system to actually do this. When I did the digitalization in the government on two aspects, human resources and accounting, I was part of the program for Malaysian government. The technology is already there. Now, Halal has just had to embrace it. And of course, you need to work on the cybersecurity to make sure that um, yeah. uh, you know the the, the threat firewalls are being given to players in industry. And I think Jackie has already got there. Now it's actually the capacity that they need to uh, the volume. We're talking about the volume coming in that that would require uh, a lot of attention by the certification entity. Okay, uh, thank you, Puan. This is another question. This is a question from uh, Dr. Hafiz. Uh, in uh, your opinion, Puan, yeah, how to have entity, for example, like uh, uh, Maci Kia selling goreng pisang, for example, who do not invite mm. to halal certification system, and to embrace halal and Thai value yeah, to improve her, her business, for example. Okay. So Dr. Fitz, you've got to play a role in halal now that you know halal. Everybody, each of us. I mean, I've got, I've got a, a very famous uh what is that tahu bagadil here we've got all the uh, <laughs> the grabs and everything's so lining yeah. outside the house you know uh, this is the much yeah. that i'm talking about and 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 then you question about whether or not you know the the grab uh providers are halal compliant in terms of logistic and whether or not the machikia knows about whether or not the ingredients that they're using is halal okay yeah. so this is the portion where previously i've already asked i've already mentioned to Jakim. It's got to be self-regulated to a certain extent. Yeah, people are talking about C to C now, consumer to consumer, because consumer become a chikia, and then the buyer is actually the friend. It's a C to C. It's not a B to C anymore. They are not. They're not registered <laughs> as an entity. Company. <laughs> yeah, they just call the grab. Uh, you know, you you tag your location. You know, I want to get somewhere from there. Please go and get me bungkus it, bungkus it for me. You know, uh, grab it for me or, or whatever. You know. In, in Indonesia, you got go pesan, you know, go. You know? They just walk. Yeah, people going to supermarket, you know, uh, you've got a Happy Fresh in, in, in Jeju, uh, sorry, Yon, Yon, and they are like buying stuff for someone, you know, and they've got a dedicated lane for them to pay, you know. So, so it's about C to C anymore. So, where's the M? Where's the B? There's none. So, the question is, how do you ensure that they are complying to the HALA requirements? So the, the, when we talk about this halal ecosystem, we talk about awareness, awareness, yeah? awareness and promotion now. This awareness is the one that we need to give it to these people. And these people, who are they? They are the C. They are the consumers. It's not about, okay, buy halal product, halal nation with Jackin logo, with uh, Mui logo, whatever <laughs> logo, whatever inside there. It's not about that. It's about yes. you, when you look at the product, you know that it's halal without looking at the logo. Yeah, it's like watching TV without reading the text, you know what the person is talking, right? It's the yes. same thing for halal. So this is the value system that needs to go back 
personal value that I mentioned. You know, there's a lot. It's not about the ustad and ustaz are talking about halal. It's about the business. Now, uh, very good orators who can talk about halal and convince the consumer. They are the marketers. So marketers is not about, oh yes, because I've got halal logo, therefore my product is halal. It's not about that. It's about delivering the value of the product and how it has it, the halal will actually value you. And this is what we are practicing in our organization. I think big MNCs now who have been involved in development of standards and skills development for Malaysia, they can speak off the cuff about halal. They are very good change ambassadors. Most, most of them already know the LLC is MNC. Now the question is, SMEs because their priorities is all about whether or not I can survive. Whether I have business the next day. Now they have to now step back, step back and look at you know how by portraying your value, embracing what halal wants, your product is the choice for the consumer. Otherwise, you'll go to the magic kiosk to see I can just go to my neighbor there and buy my tahu baka, uh, tahu bagadil without even passing any halal certification, without passing uh, doubts about whether I can eat or not because I know the person. So this, 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 this that's why now this, this disruption that's happening through pandemic, Alhamdulillah, has actually changed the landscape for how to bring halal products to the consumer. You don't need to certify the machikia. I don't believe in certifying machikia unless you want, the person wants to export. But if the person wants to export, they have to then but you know, take the, 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 the right path, becoming an enterprise, get the right agencies to help them. And I think that one, that path is already given. But they shouldn't be called Machikiala. <clears throat> there should be a proper SME. So this kind of education is also very important. Machikia is actually by night. By night also they can close, close shop. Tomorrow I don't want to make business anymore. So they can not to say that they're not part of this halal ecosystem they are a huge part of the ecosystem because they are the seas so there are a lot of platforms now trying to address c to c not b to c they're building platforms to address c to c the technopreneurs are now building this now how do you make sure that the technopreneur provide the right uh, system requirements inside there to ensure that at least at the verification of halal get done to walaupun tak ada logo Someone asked me that question yeah. from the technopreneur side. Yeah. So in other words, it's self-declared. Yeah, uh, uh, this is also the big issue now in Indonesia. This is a new regulation. And yes. people talk about the self-declared for some extent. Yes. Because uh, about 98% of the business is run by SMEs and, and micro, not, not a small industry, but micro industry. Okay. Uh, just prof, yes. Prof, I just yeah. So this is how social compliance work. Yeah? Social okay. compliance work, when they said that, when the question was posed to me um, when I was in the HDC, um, can you, uh, the, one of the de declaration points that I've got to take and sign, uh, that your staff will not um, uh, involve in any uh, abuse cases outside work. How will you verify this? How do you verify this? It's all about personal values. Yeah. If I know my yeah. staff are this type of people, they will not even, uh, you know, do this outside. Allah wa'alam, I tak tahu. Tawakal to Allah, I sign. So this is the touch when you're talking about personal value, the touch that the organization must have, especially at leadership level, that they hire the right people, they educate them, they actually train them, and they motivate them to be to to carry those value system that's why the value system has to be part of the organization okay okay uh thank you uh upon uh, norhariti is there any question from the floor yes Pa. maybe one question from me yes yeah that you mean please <laughs> yeah that, you... was very, <laughs> that was a very powerful one parity the value system very powerful one yeah. So I, I, my question is, have we done enough uh, from academic industry? Have we, have we collaborated enough thus far to strive through this VUCA world to come up with the, you know, the, the halal industry that we want? And, and if we have not done enough, what do you think we can do? Okay. That's my question. Thank you. Okay, I think this is a um, good question, Dr. Yumi. I think this is something that we also asked the question when we did the, the education framework for Halal, yeah? uh, the, the studies framework. 
uh, when we talk about uh, whether we've done enough, no, we haven't done enough. If you look at the internship, for example, the, 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 uh, the collaboration that universities has with the industry, it's all about looking at technical matters, not people matters. Yeah? Uh, but I'm not saying that, uh, orang, uh, that, that people don't do this. I've seen organizations, in my previous organization, Ensen Yang, for example, uh, Ernst and Young, because they are into accounting, yeah, the account, sorry, or auditing as well, uh, of course, uh, accounting as the, the core, they go and develop modules for the industry. They go down, they go down to Sunway, they went down to UM and actually developed the accounting modules for the students. They've got the frame, we've developed the frame, but they are the ones developing the modules. And to a certain extent, they are also teaching as visiting in areas. And these areas is where this experience come in, okay? This experience that they have in managing organization, they are the one who articulate it to the, to, the, to the students. Now, when they come out, when they come in into internship, they go down, right down to the job. When they go right down to the job, it's not about looking at technical competency as well. They're also looking at the e component the emotion side. Now, MNCs have deployed tools to ask questions about emotional uh, intelligence when you want to become part of the organization. The interview question, assessment question is no more, no more, not more about technical anymore. They don't ask what's the, what's the grades that you get, what's your CGPA, it's not about what, uh, what um, uh, topics that you have learned, it's about your emotion. How do you respond when you are in this situation? So, and there are about 50 of them. EY deployed 50 questions, and those who were interned before, sorry, I'm talking about experience, yeah, because I've got my daughter having that experience. She can't even answer that question. So what does it mean? Meaning that we have not, the university have not prepared them, have not prepared them to address the situation that they will be in when they go out at work. Now, this is where I think, uh, apart from, you know, uh, internship question, as asking very technical question, there are also that assessment. I think I've raised some of this also in some of the discussion we had. And making them part of the education system. And if you know that there are uh, those uh, uh, organizations, halal uh, industry, within halal industry, that are willing to depart the experience and, and, and into, uh, into any of these IPTs, they should be welcome to do it because this is the bridge that we are talking about, wanting to make students relevant when they go out. Not technically, because I know the system, the, the, uh, the uh, executive programs uh, for Halal, you know, Dahmantab, and we're building it in into the, the program, but the situation, how do they address situation? Uh, leadership questions, uh, peer questions, you know, uh, uh, the very system that we are talking about just now, are those questions that are being used to assess uh, grads going into uh, employment. Maybe LLCs above, they can do this, maybe not so much of SME because they're just looking for bodies rather than knowledge. But if you intend, if the students intend to be part of a bigger world, then welcome to the VOCA because that's what the things that you need to answer. If you can answer this BUCA things within that organization, um, you'll be part of it. I mean, when I was uh, interviewing, uh, interviewing people into HTC before, I didn't ask about the technical question uh, because I will go straight to the emotional level. Because if they cannot stand that, then you have difficulty managing them when they enter the organization. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh... Uh, Puan uh, is there any one last question? Yeah, if any, <laughs> I think we we should uh, end our session after this. If there is any one last question, please. No. If no more question, uh, on behalf of uh, International Institute for Halal Research and Training in Heart, we would like to thank uh, Puan Norhariti Jalil for very, very uh, uh, useful and then very enlightening yeah, talk for all uh, the participants this morning. Uh, it reached about 70 participants, yeah, Puan, it's, uh, it's a lot. Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> and some of them could not enter the room because of uh, some technical problem, even though they already registered. Oh, dear. Um,
Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, we we learned a lot yeah, from Juan uh, this morning, and then inshallah, this is uh, for for us here yeah, to play our role yeah, in 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 contributing to the development of halal industry. Uh, thank you very much once thank again. You. I think we end our session with Tasbih Kefara and Surah Al As. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.